So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I'm your mentor for RBI 24/7. So guys, as you all must be knowing that in this series called RBI 24/7, we try to discuss some current affairs related to finance and economy which can be of really use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams, right? So here we are going to do a five question series, but before moving to question number 1, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel so if you are a new entrant here and you haven't subscribed to us till now do subscribe to us it can help you as it is going to provide you with access to a lot of good content for preparation and don't forget to press this bell icon which is going to help you to stay connected to us after that you can also join our telegram group and on this group you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible Apart from that, you can always mention your doubts on the videos, but do try to mention it on the latest video as it is easier to track, right? Moving ahead, so guys, here is your question number one for today. I hope the screen is perfectly visible. Let me read it out. This question says, okay, it gives you a statement. RBI is buying dollars in the forward market. Select the option that cannot be inferred from the given statement. Statement given to you. After that, five other statements. You have to tell that with the help of this given statement, which statements cannot be inferred. So uh, be a little careful, guys. It is asking cannot be inferred, right? Moving ahead to the solution for this question, and the solution for this question says that the correct option is option B. So option B means statements one, four, and five cannot be. inferred from the given statement right so now let us try to analyze each statement one by one right so guys uh, before coming to this question i would like to tell you that uh, in a few sessions back we discussed a concept called imported inflation and what is rbi doing to curb it so guys do you remember that we discussed that how this imported inflation was there in our country and rbi was rbi was trying to let the rupee appreciate so that we have to make lesser payments lesser import payments which can curb the imported inflation right so now see earlier what had used to happen was when there was imported inflation and one more thing that a lot of fdi the a lot of foreign investment is entering into india leading to appreciation of indian rupee right so you have to combine all these things imported inflation appreciating rupee and the effects of it see earlier rbi was trying to control this appreciation so that it does not have a bad impact on our export but after that rbi thought let's not worry about imports for a while and let uh, let rupee appreciate so that it can control the problem of imported inflation right but see uh, but the statement is telling you that rbi is buying dollars in the forward market so this comes from a recent article in live mint that told us that rupee might be appreciating but in the spot market but in forward market the premiums for dollars are also increasing you can see here rupee may be gaining in the spot market but it is losing its premium against the dollar against in relation to dollar in the forward segment that means people are, that means investors are still trying to buy rupee uh, forward dollar forward contracts so guys we have to understand one thing as i just told you that earlier rbi was buying dollars or it was trying to control the appreciation appreciation of rupee by buying dollars but now it has slowed down its purchases but see if one month back rbi purchased a contract of dollar to curb in, curb the appreciation it is going to execute now or currently which is making the do premium of dollar rise so do you see a contract entered in the past not in not very past but recent past like one month or two months 
but these contracts getting executed now so that is why these are raising the premium for dollar in the forward segment right so premium for dollar is rising means the demand for dollar forward contracts is rising so this is the point i hope now you get it so see analysts was were worrying that this rise is perplexing because now rbi is not buying that much of dollar contracts they were doing it a month or two uh, back but those contracts are showing their impact now so as you can see here premium to book dollars one year ahead has risen has risen in last one month and premium for three months and six month forward contracts have also increased sharply analysts attributed it to rbi's action in the forward market and when rbi buys dollars it releases rupee i think we are clear with this concept that rbi buying dollars or buying dollar contracts it means releasing rupee or supplying rupee into market right and now coming back to our statements so first of all our answer was 1 4 and 5 that means 1 4 and 5 cannot be inferred from the given statement see the statement is telling us that rbi is buying dollars so if it buys dollars it has to give something in exchange and what is it going to give it is going to supply rupee in the market if that means it is increasing the demand of dollar and it is increasing the supply of rupee so increasing supply of rupee means rbi is trying to put downward pressure on indian rupee and if it is trying trying to put downward pressure that means it is trying to control appreciation it didn't want a uh, rupee to gain too much that is why it is trying to curb its appreciation so that means these two statements we can easily infer from this given statement that is why statement 1 and 4 not right after that we just learned that buying dollars means supplying more rupees into market that is why the statement is also false right so moving ahead to the next question for today here is your second question for today i hope you can uh, see it properly and it says sebi increase the threshold from 10 crores to dash for filing requirement of rights issue draft letter of offer with the board for its observation so basically whenever a company makes a rights issue i hope you all are clear with the meaning of rights issue we have discussed the meaning of rights issue bonus shares in our previous videos so whenever a company makes a rights issue it has to prepare a letter of offer for the rights issue in which it provides details to the board to say be for their observation whether its uh, issue is going to be good for the market or not now they have increased the threshold so that smaller companies do not have to indulge into too many formalities and the correct option for this question is option c that means the threshold has been increased to 50 crores and it was earlier 10 crores so this is a recent uh, news in which sebi has sebi e has eased up the requirements for making a rights issue see companies are in uh, dire need of raising money and rights issue is one of easier one of the easiest ways one of the easiest modes to raise money because see the issue is being uh, the issue is, is being made or the securities are being issued to the existing shareholders right so it is one of the easiest and many companies go for it as you can see they are rationalizing the eligibility criteria and disclosure requirements for the right issue in an attempt to make the fundraising easier faster and cost effective so sebi also said that that mandatory 90% minimum subscription criteria it was reduced from 90% if you remember this shall not be applicable where object of the issue involves financing other than the capital expenditure for a project so if the objective of the issue is not making a capital expenditure but anything else then this criteria is not going to hold of minimum subscription i hope we all are clear with the meaning of minimum subscription provided that the promoters undertake 
to subscribe fully to their portion of right entitlement that means promoters are fully providing uh, the the money to their share of entitlement after that some other key amendments in which issuer will be eligible to make truncated disclosures so guys obviously whenever a company issues new securities it has to make some disclosures that means it has to put forward some information into market now they are saying that uh, these issuers they would have to make a truncated that means shortened disclosures so lesser formalities easier process so sebi also said that issuer will be eligible to make fast track rights issue so to make it speedy <coughs> i'm sorry in case of pending show cause notices in respect to adjudication pros, pro, uh, prosecution proceedings and audit qualification so they are saying whenever this issue is very important and it is holding up some other processes like adjudication or there is some uh, proceeding going on it against in a court or an audit is pending whenever so wherever this issue is holding up some other processes a fast track issue can be made or so so that the hold the held up processes they can also be held fast right moving ahead to the next question here is your third question for today and this question says the economic concept dash occurs when a group of firms could achieve a more desirable equilibrium but fail to because they do not coordinate their decision making right so this question talks about an economic concept this was recently in an uh, editorial in livemind moving ahead the uh, solution the solution is option a that means the correct answer is coordinated failure so this is a very simple concept which says that if different firms in an economy they coordinate their decisions or they take a decision which benefits them uh, which benefits all of them rather than cutting each other out if they coordinate with each other they can achieve a more desirable equilibrium and a higher output for the economy right you can see here and that is why this concept can explain recessions whenever firms do not coordinate with each other through the failure of firms and other price settlers to coordinate so see coordination here means that it is very important to provide information to firms and uniform rules and regulations to them so that all of them are on a same pedestal and all of them can share the responsibility of taking the nation forward right it can result in a self fulfilling prophecy you remember what is a self fulfilling crisis a crisis which is generated by the entities themselves so an example is given to you that let's say if there is a firm and that firm assumes that okay we are going to have a recession and they start to fire their workers off and the other companies in the market they also see okay their rivals are firing employees that is why their costs are going to reduce so they look at them and they themselves start to fire in employees in uh, in an attempt to reduce their costs so right so they themselves are generating a crisis just by not coordinating with each other and just by uh, just by assuming things right so because all the laid off employees they are going to uh, lose their salaries that is why they are not going to make a demand and Uh, they they themselves will bring a recession right due to lack of demand so firing their own workers leading to a recession at a new equilibrium at lower output levels can lead to underemployment equilibrium obviously because employees are getting fired and coordination failure also implies that fiscal policy can mitigate the effects of recession as just just as i told you that if there Uh, processes are coordinated then they can prevent situations such as a recession right moving ahead here is our fourth question for today which says what is the percentage of state disaster relief fund that state governments can use according to the new rules so recently pm made a statement about it let's see what the correct option is and the correct option for this question is option c that means 50% so earlier this threshold used to be 35% but recently pm 
made a statement and it was increased to 50%. First of all, let us know something about the State Disaster Relief Fund, uh, State Disaster Response Fund. As the name shows you that it is a fund provided to states that they can use in case of any natural calamities. So constituted under Disaster Management Act 2005. So primary fund available with state governments that they can use for providing immediate relief in case of some notified disasters. So disasters which have already been notified as you can see here. Disasters such as cyclone, drought and many others, pest attack, cloud burst, avalanche, cold waves, frost, right? So recently, they are the authorities are allowing, allowing states to use this fund for COVID-19 also because it is worse than a disaster. The impact is it is having on economy. So uh, in a virtual meeting with uh, Chief Minister of st other states and UTs, PM announced that states can now use 50% of this fund and this threshold was earlier 35% so that they have some more sources of money, right? So guys, this is the last question for today. I, okay, uh, let me read it out. A dash, a, a single dash dominates a monopsonized market whereas an individual dash controls a monopolized market. So two concepts involved here, two types of markets. Monopsonized market and monopolized market. Let's see what the correct answer is. And the correct answer for this question is option D. That means a single buyer dominates a monopsony, whereas an individual seller controls a monopoly. So I think monopoly is a very common term, and we all must be knowing about it when there is a single seller in the market we say the situation is of monopoly like let's say indian railways right so if you do not like the services of indian railways then you do not have any other option if you want to travel by train you would have to travel by them only right you would have to use their own uh, their uh, only their services right or let's say if you like some Japanese dish which is not very easily available in Delhi and in Delhi there is a restaurant, one single restaurant that serves that particular dish. So if you want to eat that dish, no matter how bad it makes or how bad it service, that restaurant's services are, if you want that dish, you would have to go to that restaurant, right? So because that restaurant is having monopoly in providing you that particular uh, product offering, right? So this is a monopoly. Now monopsony happens when the case is entirely opposite. In monopsony, there is a single buyer in the market. There are a lot of sellers, but buyer is only one, right? See guys, this type of domination in the market, it comes with power. Just as I told you, this restaurant it ha is having a monopoly. That is why it is having some, uh, some power over those customers, over those buyers who are coming to it for buying its offering. Right. So similar goes here. If there is a single buyer, this buyer is having the power rather than the sellers and it can use this power to the disadvantage of seller. Right. I hope you are clear about the concept of monopsony. Now see, why are we talking about it? Because as you must have, uh, as you must be knowing that uh, recently farm bills have been passed in the parliament and there is a lot of, uh, lot of debate going around it uh, in the political circles as well as in the media. So, one of the bill provide farmers with an opportunity to sell their products to a number of private sellers. Earlier, there used to be the monopoly of APMC. I'm sorry, the monopsony of APMC because this was the single buyer that used to buy farm products of many different sellers. 
seller 1, seller 2, all these farmers, they had to sell their product to APMCs, that is Agriculture Produce and Marketing Committees, right? So, to prevent this situation, now government is suing, uh, saying that we are allowing farmers to sell their product to a number of private sellers. So, they can increase the number, uh, sorry, a number of private buyers so that they can increase the number of buyers in the market and break this monopsony of APMC. Although there is a lot of um, debate going around this topic and, this, uh, and we are just discussing the facts, right? And this is just an example to tell you that how monopsony works. Here you can see the definition like a monopoly. Monopsony also has imperfect market conditions and can also be common in labor markets where a single employer has an advantage over the workforce. So let's say there is a village where there is a lot of unemployment and there goes one company, it establishes a factory and provides employment to the idle workers there. Now, see, this company might be paying less to those workers, whatever is required in the laws, might be paying less than that. But workers are happy because they know that this is the only company providing employment to us. That is why we cannot afford to have a fight with it, right? So, this is very common in the labor markets where there is a single employer providing employment to one bunch of workers. And there is a large workforce. There they enjoy advantage over the workforce, right? So, when this happens, the wholesalers in this case, the potential employees agrees to lower wages because of factors resulting from the buying company's control, right? See, this is also what we are talking about that the workforce would have to agree whatever to whatever the employer says because of the monopsony. This wage control drives down the cost to the employer, increases the profit margin, obviously. So, why do you think these MNCs, these big companies, they... Uh, establish their factories in uh, emerging economies or developing economies because their cheaper labor is available to them due to unemployment there, right? So, if you remember many big companies, they have been in trouble. So, there was a case on Nike uh, many years back for um, employing child labor at Pakistan, right? So, so guys, these were the five questions for today. I hope you learned something new from this video and if you did, then don't forget to hit that like button. And guys, I'm, I, this is very good to see your response on the videos whenever I ask you to um, read about something, be it underwater mortgage or be it about the IPOs. So there has been a good response by people like Ishita and Shreya providing a very nice comprehensive answers. Right? So I would like more of you to be active and do share your comments. See, it's very important for peer-to-peer uh, peer -peer learning because... In the comments, you can discuss it with your fellow aspirants that what are they doing, what is their uh, perspective on a particular topic. So it is very important to have a discussion and the comments platform can provide, uh, the comments section can provide you with such a platform, right? So, uh, till the next session, take care, keep your studies going on and I'll see you in the next session. And thank you for being here. Goodbye.